there will be times in our lives as believers when God will change our literal position in, in our life and our circumstance. He'll, he'll, he'll do some, what we think are some really strange movements in our life. Say amen to that. The movements are not designed to distress you. The movements are to put you in position for what's next. Sometimes we get so complacent, God has to move us involuntarily. God, 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 when God works with us, his design for us is to never get so complacent that we're not ready for the next phase or the next step or the next encounter or the next victory. We, we being people of complacency, we get to a point and we like it so well and we want to set up camp, put down roots and all that kind of things. And, and, uh, and then when God uh, wants to move us, Sometimes he has to do some involuntary movement to get us to the next position and to the next place. Every blessing is not by the brook cherry. Some blessings are there. But sometimes God has to move you to what seems like where there are no blessings to get you a blessing. Welcome back, Chris. <laughs> Say amen to that. Amen. Elijah found himself in a situation like that. And God says, I got you. Elijah says, you understand there are people after me. No, I got you. There's a family. I got you. I got you. When there is famine, the key to your success is listening to the voice of the Holy Ghost. That's where the, the, he is the one that is going to give the instructions on what to do in the midst of a famine. Don't panic. Because God knew the famine was going to come. But he's got you. Say amen to that. Don't panic. Panic causes me not to be able to hear. And when I can't hear, I'll make a move based on my judgment and not instructions from the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Say me to that. But Elijah kept his ears open. And God was able to direct him to where he would find not only safety, but provisions while the famine was doing his thing. Isaiah? Elijah, I mean, go to the brook called Cherub. I have commanded ravens to bring you meat in the morning, noon, and night. Gone. Unlikely source. I've told birds that eat meat to bring you meat. I told birds that are, that are meat eaters. Save you some. I changed their diet to take care of you. You don't hear me? I've commanded ravens to bring you meat. Morning, noon, and night. And there's water there. It'll take, it'll take care of you. Because I got you. But that's only for a season. Eventually, the brook going to dry up. And, I'm, and I'll put a time limit on when the birds bring the meat. But that's okay. Because I got you. But don't panic because you got to hear. Now, the next move is go to this city. And you're going to see a, a, a widow woman ain't got no husband and no job. But I have commanded her to take care of you. How am I going to recognize? You'll know it's her. Because she's going to be picking up sticks. Because she don't have no money to buy wood. But I've commanded her to take care of you. Oh, man, God, she broke, I'm broke. I got you. She don't even know. I got you. 
that what she has I'm going to use to help you and bless her. You already got your blessing, you just don't know how to use it. <laughs> so he goes there, he recognized a lady, and she said, ma'am, you know, so-and-so, yes. Can you, all I got is this cup of meal. I'm picking up these sticks to make a fire. I'm going to fix this cup of meal, and me and my son going to eat it, and we're going to die because we ain't got nothing. He said, well, let me put a curve on that for you. Can you just let me put a curve on it for you? Yeah. Okay, what you mean? Uh, when you make them cakes, make me one first. Give me, give me, give me the first one and, and everything. So she went and gave him the first one. When you know the meal didn't run out, oil didn't run out, because God got you. Now that, that's some wild kind of faith right there. Say amen to that. Now you ain't going to go to no brook called Cherub. They don't have places like that no more. But you'll never know where your instructions are going to lead you. Your job is just to obey. He may lead you to somebody who hates your guts. See, <laughs> somebody ought to yell sovereign. God is sovereign enough where he'll lead me to the foot of my enemies and command them to help me. And they may be complaining and mumbling and grumbling the whole time. I don't worry about that. You don't want the person to like you that God tells to help you. No. God likes you, and that's enough. You just want the resources that he tells the person to release to you. I wish I had help. I need help. You can't get hung up. See, if he lies, well, the widow woman may not like me. I don't care if she likes you or not. That's not the point. In other words, when God steps in, the person he sends to help you has no choice. He's not coming because he likes you. He's coming because he's being directed by somebody you like. I, 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 if I could just get two people, three that understand what God is trying to tell us. I got you. There is not a famine that can take place where you're not going to have what you need. There's not a drought that can come about that where you're not going to have what you need. I got you like that. I got you like that. Never allowed. And see, like, so when God makes them, them weird, crazy moves like that, I mean, they're weird. They're crazy. Say amen to that. You have to, you, you, you can't even be a fool and follow that kind of instruction. You need something crazy like faith to help you maneuver a situation like that. Because it, it don't make sense. It defies all natural, earthly logic. It defies everything that is natural. It defies everything that is logical. And when you follow it, people come to the conclusion, you must be a fool. No, I ain't no fool, but I do walk by faith. Because being a fool can't follow this. Yeah, I just, I just can't. And so, so the idea is we must, must don't, 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 don't get complacent. Say that. Don't get complacent. Say me to that. Your roots have to be transferable. Say me to that. Now I'm finna get deep on it. When God places you, your root structure is not supposed to go down where you, he places you. Your root structure is in him. Therefore, he can always move you and effectively plant you in another place without any loss of, loss of growth or fruit production because he doesn't have to uproot you from an, another foundation. You're already in a fertile foundation. You trying to hang on. I don't want to leave. 
I'm ready to go anytime. He used to tell us in the military, always keep a bag packed. Orders could come down any day. It's time to go. And I'm telling you, when I get mine, I'm gone. Where'd he go? He must have got orders. Say me to that. So, so, so now, 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 in the midst of moves, say in the midst of moves. When God, God steps to you, he tells you it's time to do something, it's tells you it's time to go for him, say me to that. You don't move until you hear from God, because when you hear from God, you're not only going to hear move, you're going to hear where to move to. Say amen to that. You're going to hear where to move to. There's no such thing as moving and wondering. We make the fatal mistake sometimes of moving and wondering. When I'm wondering, that meant the move was by me. Say amen to that. Not by God. If I make a move without his instruction, without his direction, I'm going to wonder. I'm just wondering to the Lord tell me where to go. Well, now, Moses left Midian and went to Egypt. Then he left Egypt and went to the promised land. Wow. Wasn't no wondering. Wondering implies I'm waiting for God to show me. If he tells you to leave a place, he'll tell you where to go to the next place. Yeah. Yeah. Elijah went from the brook chariot to the lady with the, the meal. And everybody, everybody had a place to go that God told him to leave but us. See a minute. You can always tell when I'm operating in me because I get stuck out there in the land between nothing and nowhere claiming I'm waiting on direction from God. I wish I had a witness. See me in that. We got to become people who are not just people of the church house, but people that are of God. To hear the instruction. See me in that. Hear the instruction. Get the instruction. Listen for the directions. And then follow those directions explicitly. And this one I won't charge you for. Sometimes it requires you to keep your mouth shut. Y'all right. talk too much. You always revealing stuff to the wrong people. I wish I had a way. You talk too much. Say amen to that. He, he told Eli, don't tell nobody where you're going. The birds ain't going to talk. Their job is to bring meat. Say amen to that. Keep your mouth closed. You don't need to witness to nobody where God is telling you to go because they're not going to feel you on that. <laughs> they're not going to feel you because it's your trip, not theirs. You asking for people to come in on something they don't understand, and when you ask them to come in, they're going to start giving you their opinion. That's where the wheel run off the wagon. Hush your mouth. Shut up. Be quiet. Don't talk and tell nobody unless you hear instructions to do that. This one, this one I should charge you for, but I'm going to give it to you for free. Say amen to that. You notice everybody in Scripture that God told to leave one place and go to another, they never prayed about it. Y'all make the fatal mistake. How God going to tell you to go and then you say, well, I need to pray about it. You heard from the prayer answering God. Who you going to pray to to verify them instructions? Maybe God ought to come at us and say, what you praying to me for? Didn't I tell you to go already? Well, that's what he told Israel at the, at, at the Red Sea. When they started screaming, Moses started crying. He said, what you crying to me for? Take the people, stretch out that stick, and go across. Ain't no time for praying when God gives you the word. It's time for action. I wish I had two witnesses. Well, let's go on to the next phase of this encounter. Amen? To our internet audience, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we hope you are having a great holiday season. Uh, we're going to get right to our message today. So grab your Bible, your note-taking materials, and let's move quickly. Meet me in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 14. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 14. We've been talking about, last week we started on uh, talking about God's prototypes. Amen to that. And so today is part two of that because this verse connects to the verse we talked about the last time, but it's a different analogy, but it still has the same meaning, but it just takes us a little bit deeper into uh, what Christ wanted his disciples to understand their, their connection to him and their importance in the world. Say amen to that. And remember I told you the last time we got there, I, I do believe the church has lost the reason why she or it is so important to the world today. Say amen to that. Uh, and so we, we're in, but, but I tell you what, I tell you what, it's coming. It's, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. 
So, so today we're going to look at Matthew chapter 5, verse number 14. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 14. When you get that, say amen. amen. All right, now, uh, I want to ask you to stand because we need to move on through this and get, get going. But, uh, so, in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 15, the Bible says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Look how he writes the text. Neither do men light a candle, comma, and put it under a bushel, comma, but on a candlestick, semicolon. I think that's what that is. Yeah. And, and, and when the man, and when the man buys this candle and does not do that, but, put, but does this, uh, then the candle has the ability to give light or to cast light, or to be a light, or to be a beacon, or to be something like a guiding post to all that are in the house. So the idea, the idea of the text is, uh, at, at when we look at verse number 13 from last week, it says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Amen? So he starts today and he says, neither. The word neither in the text has to do with, it has the meaning of meaning, not now nor ever. Say amen to that. Anybody here gets hungry and go to a restaurant and buy, order a meal and don't eat it? Neither do men buy a candle and put it on the bushel. Nobody goes to a restaurant, order a full course meal when they are hungry and then just look at it. But they consume it. They eat it. And as a result of eating it, it fortifies them to do something that people can see. You know, eating food really wasn't designed to put us to sleep. It was designed to give us strength to do something. We use it for the wrong thing. When we use food for the wrong thing, that's bushel basket living. Yeah. Eat so much you can't never go to sleep, you're living under a bushel. Say amen to that. Now, so he says, neither do men, neither, no way, not how, not ever do men light a candle. Now, I bought some props today, uh, uh, and I've done this before, but I think the, the Spirit of God is going to help us understand what Jesus is talking about. I brought some props today because some of us are visual learners. I'm not. But, so I brought some props. When I was a kid, this is a miniature version of a bushel basket. Now, when I was a bushel basket is about five times the size of this. And a bushel basket is what we used to use to pick peaches and butter beans and all those kinds of things. See, man, see y'all looking at the same, what is that? People use it for decoration. Now, we used to use these things to live on. Say amen to that. Say amen to that. So, <laughs> say amen. Now, so, but I had to get a smaller one. Now, uh, and, and the ones we had didn't have a nice handle. Matter of fact, if you go into, uh, where's the place? There's a, if you go into, uh, uh, there's a place in town that has a picture of some guys picking oranges. And they got these bushel baskets hanging. Anybody ever picked oranges before? Anybody old enough? Yeah. You remember the big basket? Remember the big old basket I used to have with that thing around it? That was a bushel basket. And they got this picture of these four African-American men picking these oranges with this big bushel basket hanging on the side. So this, that's the bushel basket. It denotes the bushel basket is a metaphor, and it symbolizes two things. One is hard work. Say amen to that. And then another one is, it's, it's, it, it denotes hard work, but it also can denote dark works, works of darkness. Hard work and works of darkness, dark works that do not benefit anything. So he says, in the text he says, can you put that back up on the screen for us? He says, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. So he says, a person does not need light in their house, go to the store, buy a candle. I got two sources here. This is, a, this is what we used to call a kerosene lamp. And operates on the principle of kerosene, a wick, and a wheel. See me into that. I have to give it to you like this because 
Electricity does not effectively demonstrate this because electric lamp ain't mobile. Unless you have another source to plug it into where you're taking it. I wish I had a witness. So now, so here we have, so we have two sources of light. Say me to that. One is driven. Now this particular light has oil in it. We would call it kerosene. And the flame is controlled by lowering and raising, raising the wick. You lower the wick, the flame dims. The lower you lower the wick, the dimmer the flame. Dim and lower. We'll say that's kind of like bushel basket living. But he says, no man lights a candle. Put it on a bushel. In other words, if I take the time to go to the store and buy this light because I need to see, and then I take it, <coughs> nobody can see that. So I, I take the candle and I put it in the house and I put it under a bushel basket. Now, the candle is still lit because there's air getting to the flame. But nobody can see the flame, so the flame is not a benefit to where it's placed. Now, so he says, neither do men. Like everybody's scared it's going to burn up. <laughs> it's amazing to me. Y'all focus. Do you think I would do this if I didn't have assurances? I'm doing this because I got assurance that this bushel basket ain't going to burn up. When I was in the store yes, the other day picking it out, the Spirit of God said, now they're going to be worried <laughs> if you get a candle tall enough to reach the top of this basket because they're going to be concerned about the basket burning up. And there y'all went. <laughs> it's amazing that God can't keep us focused on the real thing and our mind run off on something else. Say amen to that. That candle is still burning. Under there. And it's not going to burn the basket up. You know why? Because that candle is strategically placed. It's just tall enough and just short enough where the heat of the flame does not intensify enough to burn the basket. It's just for illustration purposes. No man buys a candle and put it under a bushel. Right now. Now, so that candle is lit. But no one can see the flame because it's under a bushel. It's under this basket. This basket is a symbol of works. It's a symbol of works. So that means, so if, these, if this basket is a symbol of works, and if over the candle, and I can't see the candle, that means these works are canceling the light of the candle. Say me that. The Bible says we have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. And there's another verse that said we should quit the works of darkness. Say me that. It's many Christians who are saved, but their light can't be seen because they participate in darkness. Say me that. It's still lit. But you ain't going to see it. You cannot work dark and produce light. He says, neither do me. So, so, so works of darkness and, and dark works and works that, no, no, it doesn't have to be where it can be thinking, dark thinking, dark associates, dark living, or any, anything that is opposite light will keep people from benefiting from your light. Now he says, neither do men light a candle. That's wax. It'll be okay. I'm trying to get it to a certain point. Yeah, there we go. He says, but he takes the count, takes it. Give me that. No man lights a candle and put it under a bushel, right? But on a candlestick, right? Candlestick. So that means that implies that the the light then has to be relocated. The candle must be relocated in order for it to be a benefit to the surrounding population. Yeah. So that means this has to be removed. So the participation in this has to cease. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's comfortable in this, though. Right. 
You'll find folk who agree with you in this. You'll find folk who applaud you in this. But if you want to be relocated from under the bushel to the candlestick, there has to be a transplantation. So he says, but me, he's taking the candle, and I got this, this thing here, and he puts it on a candle stick. Right? The first thing is a candle stick. The first thing we see is that when the candle was moved from under the bushel to the candle stick, it was elevated. has to be relocated from under something, keeping it dark, so there's an elevation that takes place in the life of a person if they want to be a light that will benefit their surroundings. I had my media team uh, build me up a picture, get me a picture of a, what a lampstand looks like in Jesus' day. This is what a lampstand looks like. Notice the configuration of the lampstand. Right? Notice how each candle holder connects to a center stand. Give me to that. Notice that when they connect at different junctures in the center post, they still come out and form a level across the top, which means. Now, symbolically, that center post is Jesus Christ. So when you move from bushel to a candlestick, there's an increase in the visibility of your light. Yeah. Say me to that. Now, and when there's an increase in the visibility of your light, say me to that. Killer lights. Keon, how tall are you now? Kenyon, are you here? Give me somebody like 6'2", six 6'3". Six Anybody here that tall, taller? Come on, Anthony. Come on, Anthony. Now, watch this. It's amazing how I'm going to dim the light in this. Now, he says, when this relocation takes place and the candle is taken from under the bushel and put on a candlestick, there's an elevation. All right? All right? Now, in our house back in Georgia, we used to take that candle or that kerosene lamp, and put it on the mantelpiece, which is over the fireplace. Right? Now, see, now watch this. You notice how down low it appears that this light cannot be seen. But what happens when I put it on a mantle? First, it's on a candlestick. Now, get it elevated up to your height. Everybody can see it. Now, if this room was totally dark, the person sitting in the farthest corner that way and that way could see that light. Yeah. Say amen to that. Be because it's been elevated. But the light didn't get elevated by itself. It had to be placed into a lamp stand. The, 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 the center post gives the, light, the candle the elevation it needs, right, so that people can see the light and then are drawn to the light. Amen? Turn the lights back on. Thank you so much. Now, in our house, we got one bathroom that faces east. And uh, when you take a shower and then you turn the light on, if you listen closer, you hear these little taps on the window. Tap, tap, tap. I remember when I first heard it, I was like, what is that? Tap, tap. So one night I went outside, and outside it's pitch dark. And I look around, all these bugs traveling as fast as they can because they see this light. And it's like they can't help themselves. They go running and pop right into the window. 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 And I'm like, the next morning, all these dead bugs, broken necks, broken wings, because they trying to get to the light. And there was a barrier keeping them from getting there. They make a thing called a zapper. It's an electronic thing, has a black light inside of it and wire around it, and it's electrified. 
and it's designed to electrocute bugs when they fly into it. But when that, when that bug light is on in the dark, it's like it just draws them. They can see other bugs going to it and dying. They still just go to it. And you're sitting there and sometime you hear it come, zzz, 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 zzz. And every time it does that, that means a bug is dead. Now, your light is not for zapping. Plus, your light has, doesn't have a barrier to keep people from seeing it. Same internet. But when there is an elevation, the Bible says that God, when, when we humble ourselves under him, he, he exalts us or he elevates us. The purpose for elevation, same into that, is so people can see. They need to be able to see. Neither do men. Watch it now. So what are you saying, God? This is what I'm saying. I didn't save you to hide under a table. I didn't deliver you for you to hide under a bush. I delivered you to be elevated. Uh oh, it's, it's quiet now. Now watch it, watch it, watch it. No, no, no. Things that keep me from being elevated are never settling my past issues. Settle them. Moving on past them. And moving on past the folk that maybe did them. Say amen to that. It's quiet in here. Not only my past issues with folks, selling my past issues with myself. Right. Say amen to that. You, you have been delivered from, all, the Bible says it like this. When God forgives us, say amen to that. You know what forgiveness for God means? It doesn't exist anymore. But if I keep letting it be an issue, God wants to elevate me, but I don't trust his delivering power. I don't trust what he's done in my life. I don't, I don't trust that, he, that I'm different, and I, I keep listening to what other people. I remember when you used to do this, and I remember when you used to do that. I remember when we used to do this. Man, don't nobody care about that. Nobody care about that. Oh, he all holy now, but I remember. She all this now, but I remember. So you do remember. Now look at this light and come on, join me. I want you to remember. I, I, I wish I had a witness. I want you to remember. I want you to remember how drunk I used to get. I want you to remember how high I used to get. I want you to remember how much dope I used to slang, how much crack I used to use. I want you to remember how many women I used to run. I want you to remember how many men I used to sleep with. I want you to have a document record of all the hell I raised. All the sin I committed. I want you to have, and then I want you to make sure that you have on that list that you so faithfully keep concerning me. <laughs> Say amen to that. Amen. Somewhere on that list, you got the day that I met Jesus. Come on, somebody. On that list somewhere, because you, you, you got the habit, because you so nosy about my life, you can't even live your own. You got to have it. You got to have it because you're so concerned about what I'm doing. You can't even do your own thing. I know you got it. I know you got it because you talk about me more. You talk about yourself. So, so, so there's no doubt that you got a record of when I met Jesus. Your problem is you stop documenting after that. And the problem with that is you saw the changes happening. And it blew your mind more than it blew mine. So you stop writing down the changes because the changes was messing up your script from the other time. And therefore, now you don't tell everybody they this and they that. You, I remember this. That's because your ledger. Yeah. Neither do men. I'm about done. Neither do men. Now, right? Turn to Hebrews 12.1. Write it down. Hebrews 12.1. Hebrews 12.1. I think that's right. Hebrews 12.1. I'm going to 
I'm waiting on my media folk. Hebrews 12.1. It's Hebrews 12.1. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, now, watch this. This is the cure for moving the can your candle, say my candle, from under the bushel. Now, I want to tell you something. You know what? Placing myself under the bushel can happen without me even knowing it. Placing myself under a bushel uh, placing myself in darkness can happen sometimes without me even knowing it. Now, so this is, this is the cure for, so this is the cure from moving from under the bushel to the candlestick. He says, he says, look in the text, the writer writes, he says, wherefore seeing we are, we also are compassed, are surrounded about so great a cloud of witnesses. Now, those witnesses that we are surrounded by are not in this building right now. The witnesses we are surrounded by are those scripture references in Hebrew chapter 11. God says, God says, I guess God's like, you know, that, that's enough examples right there for you to do what I'm about to tell you. You know, they were men just like you. They were women just like you. They had flaws just like you. They were, there were many times they had to move from underneath the bushel to, to the mantle. So, so they're not any different than you. But I'm, go, I'm, I'm telling you, they are, you are surrounded with enough witnesses to help you move from under the bushel. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about so great a cloud of witnesses, look what he says. Now, here it is. Here it is. Let us. This is a voluntary action. Say voluntary. voluntary. Let us lay aside every weight. Mm. Remember I said about the bushel? When I used to work in peaches and all that stuff, and when you get that big bush of fear, you have to carry it to the main thing to dump it. Uh, this thing is really light, but when it's full of peaches or full of butter beans, it's really heavy. It produces heavy weight. When I started, when you start working in the field in the morning with this back, with the basket, it's really big, you walk like this. But when that thing gets loaded, you come out to dump it, you like this. The implication is, this is what sin does to me. It casts unnecessary and unwanted burdens that I have to carry that I'm really not designed to carry. That's why they put in automation in the fields. People back don't last long carrying these big, I wish I had a witness. So he says in the text, right? So I got to lay aside every weight and the sin. See, it's the sin that produces the burden. It's the sin that produces the burden. And when the burden that is produced from the sin, it says, let us lay aside the weight and every sin, which does so easily beset me. It sets me back or it slows me down. Or it moves me, it keeps me from being elevated to where I'm supposed to be. It besets me. It sounds like, the word beset sounds like something that takes away from something, detracts from me, reduces me, replaces me, puts me somewhere I don't want to be, has me doing what I don't want to do, has me acting what I don't want to act because it's an unnecessary. And he says, you got to know, know what lay aside implies? Let me show you what lay aside implies. Let me hold it. Watch this. Now, I want you to pretend, I want you to pretend that that basket is on fire in your hand. That's what lay aside means. <laughs> lay aside don't mean pray about it. Lay aside don't mean think about it. Lay aside don't mean consider. Lay aside recognize means recognize what it is and drop it. Quit it right now. When I stop lying? Right now. When I stop doing this right now, ain't no discussion. Ain't no me with no prayer partner. It's burning my hand. Drop it. It's causing me some problems. Drop it. Let us lay aside every sin, every way in the sin, which does so easily. Be and then he says, watch this. Now watch this. Give him a, give him a basket back. Every time I dump that basket full of pieces or whatever, when I pick it up again, I'm And let us run. But when it's full, I can't run. 
When it's full, I can't run. See, we as people don't understand, right, the severity of underbushel living. Don't, don't misunderstand existing with prospering. I can exist and nobody will never know I'm not prospering. Because I can front in existing. Because everybody around me is fronting. When the last time the church really had any real prosperity? Where well, folk can look at me and go, wow, that sister is prosperous. We always try to sound prosperous. We always try to say things that make us people believe that we are prosperous. Say me But you know, prosperity is like a black eye. Folk can see it whether you say anything or not. Say me that. Now, so he says, when we, this is the cure for under bush of living, right? When I lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset me, it stops me from doing what I'm supposed to do or being who I'm supposed to be, saving to that. He says, then I am free to run with patience or run with endurance. Run, with in, run, what's it, run without getting tired because I'm carrying unnecessary baggage. I wish I had a witness. Remember I told you I've been very blessed in my life. Say amen to that. And I told you my greatest blessing was my wife. Say amen to that. I blow away when I talk like this. I really do. She don't know how to handle a brother. I, but anyway. She is, she is uh, she calls, when God gives you a partner, say amen to that. That partner has to be able to keep pace with you. Now, we're not actually on no track running, but there's a mission. I wish I had a witness. That's why it's important that I let God pair me up with the right running partner. Say me to that. Because my ability to run effectively is going to greatly depend on my partner's ability yeah. to not only run with me, but give me the freedom to run how I need to run, yeah. while I give them the freedom to run how they need to run, yeah. so we both can run this thing we got to do. Yeah. Hey, say amen to that. Yeah. You ever notice that, and uh, some, some of these guys here, all you track, ex-track guys will know this. You know, in a, in a four-by-four relay, you got four guys, right? You got uh, the, the start guy, then you got a middle guy, then there's a there's another guy, then there's an anchor guy. Say me to that. There's like 12 guys in a 4 by 4 right? Am I right? Track people, am I right? 12 guys? First, second, third, fourth, right? Four legs. And then there's four guys in each lane. So there's four, 16 people running one race. You know why? Because in that one race, it requires 16 different types of runners. The first guy is usually the guy who's quick out of the blocks. Because he gives you a head jump. Then you got that second guy because his strength is in that first leg. That's where his speed is. Then you got that third guy. His, his, his strength is not in the anchor, but it's in that just before the anchor, that burst that everybody needs. Now, the anchor guy, he's the guy that brings it home. But if he doesn't get it, the baton, at the right time from them other three guys, I don't care how fast he is. See, that's why the relay is not really about all speed. It's about technique. And it's about timing on moving and passing the baton and handing it at the right time so that the next guy can move. See, you're not just lighting up for yourself. You're lighting so you can hand out stuff. So this person can pick up and run their part. Run their part. And that's why, that's why I'm glad I have the woman that I have because she lets me run like I need to run. I hope I let her run like she need to run. I don't know. I don't know until she tell me. Say amen to that. Say amen to that. All we're trying to do, all we're trying to say is this. Say amen to that. I need to move out from under. My race is not designed to be run under a bushel. There's no rewards for bushel racing. There's no rewards for bushel living. 
My life is designed to be run on a track where thousands upon thousands can witness and see my light shining before men. So he says in the text, let us, let, and let us run with patience, endurance, be consistent. Bushel basket living keeps me inconsistent. Say me to that. You know sometimes how certain situations cause you to disappear? You don't stop being a child of God, you just disappear. Hiding in your misery. Hiding in your pain. Suffering in silence. Say amen to that. And then all of a sudden, you hear a word from the Lord and you recollect who you are. And you recollect where you've been. I've been, wow. I've been lost for a minute. You ever, you ever see when you, when you realize who you are and you make that come back? You know how you feel? Yeah. How you, that, that fire start is, all, is kindling and it's burning. And then, you know, you, you, your prayer sign different. You clap, you're doing everything. Say amen to that. That's because when you hide under a bushel, your flame dims. See, remember what I told you. Now, the difference between this candle and this lamp is simply this. This is powered by oil. As long as the bottom of that lamp stays full, this thing will burn and continue to burn and continue to burn. When I allow my problems, and you're going to have them, when I allow my circumstances, situations, to send me under the bushel, Yeah, when I go under the bush, when I go on the ground, when I go on the cover. Now, I'm still God's child, but my light is really dim. Doesn't happen until I get a revelation about who I am and that the way I'm living right now is really kind of below the standard. And I forget that I'm, a, I'm stuck in some oil. And that the closer I get to God, the more his light is going to be elevated in me. It'll keep going. I keep on going until the flame comes out the top of this thing. This is what happens to the prodigal son. When he came to himself, his light came on. And he realized who he was. And he realized what he was doing was not in line with who he was. So he said, I need to fix two things. First, I need to fix where I am. And then I need to fix my position in God. So I'm going to get up, turn my light back on. And I'm going to go to my father and I'm going to apologize. But he had no idea that the giver of light was always looking for his light to come back. See, you can, you can never really extinguish the light. You'll make it go low, but you can't make it go out. Once you have tasted of Jesus, and once you have seen that he is good, you can't put the light out. So that, that, that's always going to be a remnant of him in you. It's just there are times when I allow things to dim my light, when God says, I want your light to consistently shine. Now, the best time, and I'm done, the best time to make sure your light is shining is when times are difficult. When times are difficult, when you are battling, that's the best time for your light to shine. That's the best time for folk to see your brilliance coming through. It ain't going to burn up. It's all right. Say me to that. You know why? Because when they see your light shining in the midst of difficult situations, that gives them hope in their situation. That gives them hope. But if you're running high, they're going to figure, well, she can't make it. And that girl be in church every time the door opens. I don't have a chance. Say amen to that. Now, 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 and I'm, and I'm, I'm really done. Let me, let me put these flames out. There we go. Now, 
we are all lights. Say amen to that. But we are, not illum we are not immune from the winds of this world. Amen? Amen. But God, the, the text says, neither do men light a candle. Put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. Yes. We all have been placed in Jesus. Yes. Say amen to that. So Jesus is the true light. Yes. We draw our light from being attached to him. His light will never go out. So therefore, as long as I stay attached, my light will never go out. As long as I stay attached, I don't care how hard the wind blows. I don't care how hard the rain comes down. I don't care how hard the storms come in life. I don't care what, who comes, who goes. As long as I'm connected to Jesus, my light will shine, shine, shine. Right? Right? Because if I understand... In the times of storm, people are looking for the light of the lighthouse. It's the lighthouse that has a beacon that's always turning. North, south, east, and west. You know what the lighthouse is saying? There's land over here. There is safety over here. So when we're shining, you know what we're saying? There is safety over here. There is deliverance over here. There's problem solving over here. God is over here, and he's ready to share his light. Put your hands together. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus is the true light, and they nailed the true light to an old rugged cross. They nailed the true light's hand. They nailed his feet. They pierced the true light in the side. They put a crown of thorns on the true light's head, and the true light died. And the true light was laid into a dark, buried tomb. But early on the third day morning, see, you can't keep light in darkness. The third day morning, true light got up and then declared, Now all power in heaven and earth is in my hand. And you have been placed in the holder of the true light. Let your light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glory for our Father who is in heaven. Put your hands together. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You may be here today and, and for whatever reason, if you are here today and the word of God has moved on your heart and the spirit of God is speaking to you right now and you have not made a decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life, if that's you and you hear the Holy Spirit saying you should do this, make your way down front. These folk here are, to, are here to lead you in a prayer of salvation. So you will acknowledge Christ as the Son of God, believe that God raised him from the dead, and by your confession, according to Romans 10, you will be saved. Or you may be here today, and you're out of fellowship. Maybe, maybe you've been living under the bush. Maybe the weight of the bush has caused your light to dim. Maybe in some cases you may think it's out. But if you, if, you, if you understand the scriptures and understand that if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and then purify you from all unrighteousness, then your, 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 your flame can be reignited just as high, just as powerful as it was before it went under the bush. So if you are here today, these folk again are here to lead you in a prayer of restoration where you can be restored to full light shift with God. Or you may be here today and you're looking for a, a church home where you can learn with the body of believers, serve with the body of believers, and find your purpose and calling in that body of believers. And if that's you, for any three of those invitations, as we stand, as the choir gives us enough, if that's you, make your way down front. And these folks will gladly receive you for salvation, restoration, or to become a part of this body of believers. If that's you, from wherever you are in this room, make your way down front. Anyone here today? Anyone here today? Anyone here today? Thank you so much. You may be seated. Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. To our internet audience, thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure having you with us today. I just want to let you know, be mindful of our December calendar because there's some holiday dates in there. You want to make sure you keep in mind 
uh, of our schedule for the holiday so you'll be uh, so you'll know exactly what we're doing and you can be on time for the events. Uh, we have our Christmas production coming up December the 17th. I want to take this opportunity to invite you. I think the place starts around 4 in the evening on Saturday the 17th. Please come. Uh, you, anyone's welcome to come. Come in and watch our children perform and watch them and just encourage them in the Lord. So we look forward to seeing you. Have a great holiday season. Uh, uh, remember to keep Jesus. It's an old adage, but Jesus is the reason for the season. And, you know, don't stretch yourself out too much trying to buy all these gifts. I mean, if you want to, that's your thing. But, you know, whatever. Amen? So thank you so much for tuning in today. As we leave you today, remember Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. God bless you. We'll look for you to see us on our next broadcast. Have a great day. Goodbye. Put your hands together. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap. Did we have any guests and first-time visitors today? Any guests or first-time visitors today? I was looking. I didn't see anyone's name. Thank you so much. All right. No guests or first-time. Amen. Before we leave today.